Okay, welcome to the first of many videos on how to program with EZC. This is going to be for version 4 and version 5, and this is a VEX program. So let's get started. This is autonomous mode. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to File, New Standalone Project, and you're going to want to create an autonomous only project. What this means is there is going to be zero user input once the program has begun. I'm going to click OK and you should be looking at a screen that looks similar to mine. Now, autonomous programs typically work with motors. So I'm going to head over to my outputs and over here I have three different types of outputs. I have a digital output which is, you know, buttons, sensory like that, servos, which is a motor that can move from 0 to 100 degrees, as well as a motor module. And 9 out of every 10 times you're going to be working with a motor module, so that's what I'm going to focus on. If for whatever reason you need one of these other two, um, just ask me to make a video on it. So, motor module, I'm going to grab one of these, and I'm going to drop it in between variables and end. And when you do that, you're going to be presented with these options. First thing first, you want to make sure that your motor is plugged into the right port. So if you look at your Cortex, make sure that it is plugged in either 1 through 10. And then you want to specify that. And then you can choose how it rotates. Is it counterclockwise, clockwise, or a user value? What user value means is that it can go max speed at 127, but if you lower this to let's say 63 or something, it's going at roughly half the speed of its maximum. And if I change that to a negative 63, then it would be going in a counter or whoops in a clockwise direction. So let's say I wanted motor one to move at negative 63. I need to make sure it's plugged in there, but then I can hit OK and it's been added. Now typically your your robot's not going to move with just one motor so typically this is a two to four motor process if I drop in another one let's say I plug this one into 10 and I'm going to have this one go as 63 as well and let's say um, my motors were inversed so I'm going to have this go at a positive 63 and I'm going to hit OK and now both are in the program it's important to note that if you're not going the same speed, your robot is going to be performing some kind of turn. And if you're trying to get your robot to go straight, a turn might not be the best route. So right now our robot is moving, and it's just going to keep moving forever and ever, which isn't always what we want to do. Let's say we want it to stop after two seconds. We need to add some kind of stop command to this. So. Heading over to your program flow block up here, I'm going to click on the plus, and I'm going to grab a wait block. What a wait block does, and I'm going to drag it in right after that last motor, is it allows the program to run for a certain amount of time before moving to the next action. And the number denoted in the wait is in milliseconds. So right now, it's waiting 1,000 milliseconds which is the same as one second. So if I wanted to wait two seconds, I would wait 2,000 milliseconds. So I'm going to click OK, and now I'm going to wait 2,000 milliseconds, and then I'm going to throw in my motors again, so I'm going to put in motor one, and I'm going to order motor one to stop by clicking on the middle option. Hit OK, do the same with motor 10 and then hit OK. So what's happening right now is my motors are going to move forward for two seconds and then they're both going to stop. And this is pretty much the entire gist of autonomous mode. If you want more motors to happen or more actions to happen you simply drag in more blocks and you know you can modify the speeds so if I wanted to create like a turn of some sort whoops just want to put a negative there turn of some sort so it's going to do this action 
and then you specify how long it should do the action for, so maybe 3,000 milliseconds, and then you tell it to stop again, and so on and so forth. Um, once you get good at this, you can just you know do it really quickly, test your robot, see what happens, and essentially put together an autonomous mode using only motors. Now this isn't the most responsive of autonomous modes, um, but it is a good way of going through a maze. So anyway, that's going to conclude this video. I will see you in the next one.